The division of Korea began at the end of World War II in 1945. With the defeat of Japan, the Soviet Union occupied the north of Korea, and the United States occupied the south, with the boundary between their zones being the 38th parallel. With the onset of the Cold War, negotiations between the United States and the Soviet Union failed to lead to an independent and unified Korea. In 1948, UN-supervised elections were held in the U.S.-occupied South only. Syngman Rhee won the election while Kim Il-sung was appointed as the leader of North Korea. This led to the establishment of the Republic of Korea in South Korea, which was promptly followed by the establishment of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea in North Korea. The United States supported the South, the Soviet Union supported the North, and each government claimed sovereignty over the whole Korean peninsula. The subsequent Korean War, which lasted from 1950 to 1953, ended with a stalemate and has left the two Koreas separated by the Korean Demilitarized Zone up to the present day. Diplomatic initiatives have so far failed to end the division. Historical background Japanese rule When the Russo-Japanese War ended in 1905 Korea became a nominal protectorate of Japan, and was annexed by Japan in 1910. The Korean Emperor Gojong was removed. In the following decades, nationalist and radical groups emerged, mostly in exile, to struggle for independence. Divergent in their outlooks and approaches, these groups failed to unite in one national movement. The Korean provisional government in China failed to obtain widespread recognition. <inaudible> <inaudible> World War II At the Cairo Conference in November 1943, in the middle of World War II, Franklin Roosevelt, Winston Churchill and Chiang Kai-shek agreed that Japan should lose all the territories it had conquered by force. At the end of the conference, the three powers declared that they were, "...mindful of the enslavement of the people of Korea determined that in due course Korea shall become free and independent." Roosevelt floated the idea of a trusteeship over Korea, but did not obtain agreement from the other powers. Roosevelt raised the idea with Joseph Stalin at the Tehran Conference in November 1943 and the Yalta Conference in February 1945. Stalin did not disagree, but advocated that the period of trusteeship be short. At the Tehran and Yalta conferences, Stalin promised to join his allies in the Pacific War in two to three months after victory in Europe. On August 8, 1945, three months to the day after the end of hostilities in Europe, and two days after the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, the Soviet Union declared war on Japan. As war began, the commander-in-chief of Soviet forces in the Far East, Marshal Alexander Vasilevsky, called on Koreans to rise up against Japan, saying, "...a banner of liberty and independence is rising in Seoul." Soviet troops advanced rapidly, and the U.S. government became anxious that they would occupy the whole of Korea. On August 10, 1945 two young officers, Dean Rusk and Charles Bonesteel, were assigned to define an American occupation zone. Working on extremely short notice and completely unprepared, they used a National Geographic map to decide on the 38th parallel. They chose it because it divided the country approximately in half but would place the capital Seoul under American control. No experts on Korea were consulted. The two men were unaware that 40 years before, Japan and pre-revolutionary Russia had discussed sharing Korea along the same parallel. Rusk later said that had he known, he almost surely would have chosen a different line. The division placed 16 million Koreans in the American zone and 9 million in the Soviet zone. To the surprise of the Americans, the Soviet Union immediately accepted the division. The agreement was incorporated into General Order No. 1 approved on the 17th of August 1945 for the surrender of Japan. Soviet forces began amphibious landings in Korea by August 14 and rapidly took over the northeast of the country and on August 16 they landed at Wonsan. On August 24, the Red Army reached Pyongyang. General Abe Nobuyuki, the last Japanese Governor General of Korea, had established contact with a number of influential Koreans since the beginning of August 1945 to prepare the handover of power. Throughout August, Koreans organized People's Committee branches for the Committee for the Preparation of Korean Independence. 
CPKI, Joseon Jingujun Bawiwanho led by Lyuh Woon Hung, a left-wing politician. On September 6, 1945, a Congress of Representatives was convened in Seoul and founded the short-lived People's Republic of Korea. In the spirit of consensus, conservative elder statesman Syngman Rhee, who was living in exile in the U.S., was nominated as president. Post-World War II In December 1945, at the Moscow Conference, the Allies agreed that the Soviet Union, the US, the Republic of China, and Britain would take part in a trusteeship over Korea for up to five years in the lead-up to independence. Many Koreans demanded independence immediately, however, the Korean Communist Party, which was closely aligned with the Soviet Communist Party, supported the trusteeship. According to journalist Fyodor Tertitsky, documentation from 1945 suggests the Soviet government had no plans for a permanent division. A Soviet US Joint Commission met in 1946 and 1947 to work towards a unified administration, but failed to make progress due to increasing Cold War antagonism and to Korean opposition to the trusteeship. In 1946, the Soviet Union proposed Lyuh Woon Hung as the leader of a unified Korea, but this was rejected by the US. Meanwhile, the division between the two zones deepened. The difference in policy between the occupying powers led to a polarization of politics, and a transfer of population between North and South. In May 1946 it was made illegal to cross the 38th parallel without a permit. At the final meeting of the Joint Commission in September 1947, Soviet delegate Taran Tishtakov proposed that both Soviet and U.S. troops withdraw and give the Korean people the opportunity to form their own government. This was rejected by the U.S. U.S. <inaudible> occupation of South Korea With the American government fearing Soviet expansion, and the Japanese authorities in Korea warning of a power vacuum, the embarkation date of the U.S. occupation force was brought forward three times. On September 7, 1945, General Douglas MacArthur announced that Lieutenant General John R. Hodge was to administer Korean affairs, and Hodge landed in Incheon with his troops the next day. The Provisional Government of the Republic of Korea, which had operated from China, sent a delegation with three interpreters to Hodge, but he refused to meet with them. Likewise, Hodge refused to recognize the newly formed People's Republic of Korea and its People's Committees, and outlawed it on 12 December. In September 1946, thousands of laborers and peasants rose up against the military government. This uprising was quickly defeated, and failed to prevent scheduled October elections for the South Korean Interim Legislative Assembly. The ardent anti-communist Syngman Rhee, who had been the first president of the provisional government and later worked as a pro-Korean lobbyist in the U.S., became the most prominent politician in the South. Rhee pressured the American government to abandon negotiations for a trusteeship and create an independent Republic of Korea in the South. On July 19, 1947, Lyuh Woon Hung, the last senior politician committed to left right dialogue, was assassinated by a 19 year old man named Han Chi Joon, a recent refugee from North Korea and an active member of a nationalist right wing group. The occupation government conducted a number of military campaigns against left wing insurgents. Over the course of the next few years, between 30,000 and 100,000 people were killed. Topic: Soviet occupation of North Korea. When Soviet troops entered Pyongyang, they found a local branch of the Committee for the Preparation of Korean Independence operating under the leadership of veteran nationalist Cho Man Sik. The Soviet army allowed these People's Committees, which were friendly to the Soviet Union, to function. In September 1945, the Soviet administration issued its own currency, the Red Army One. In 1946, Colonel General Tarantish Takov took charge of the administration and began to lobby the Soviet government for funds to support the ailing economy. In February 1946, a provisional government called the Provisional People's Committee was formed under Kim Il sung, who had spent the last years of the war training with Soviet troops in Manchuria. Conflicts and power struggles ensued at the top levels of government in Pyongyang as different aspirants maneuvered to gain positions of power in the new government. In March 1946 the provisional government instituted a sweeping land reform program, land belonging to Japanese and collaborator landowners was divided and redistributed to poor farmers. 
Organizing the many poor civilians and agricultural laborers under the People's Committees, a nationwide mass campaign broke the control of the old landed classes. Landlords were allowed to keep only the same amount of land as poor civilians who had once rented their land, thereby making for a far more equal distribution of land. The North Korean land reform was achieved in a less violent way than in China or in Vietnam. Official American sources stated, "...from all accounts, the former village leaders were eliminated as a political force without resort to bloodshed, but extreme care was taken to preclude their return to power." The farmers responded positively, many collaborators and former landowners fled to the South, where some of them obtained positions in the new South Korean government. According to the U.S. military government, 400,000 Northern Koreans went South as refugees, key industries were nationalized. The economic situation was nearly as difficult in the North as it was in the South, as the Japanese had concentrated agriculture in the South and heavy industry in the North. Soviet forces departed in 1948. UN intervention and the formation of separate governments With the failure of the Joint Commission to make progress, the U.S. brought the problem before the United Nations in September 1947. The Soviet Union opposed UN involvement. At that time, the U.S. had more influence over the UN than the USSR. The UN passed a resolution on November 14, 1947, declaring that free elections should be held, foreign troops should be withdrawn, and a UN Commission for Korea, the United Nations Temporary Commission on Korea should be created. The Soviet Union boycotted the voting and did not consider the resolution to be binding, arguing that the UN could not guarantee fair elections. In the absence of Soviet cooperation, it was decided to hold UN-supervised elections in the South only. This was in defiance of the report of the chairman of the commission, K.P.S. Menon, who had argued against a separate election. Some UNTCOK delegates felt that the conditions in the South gave unfair advantage to right wing candidates, but they were overruled. The decision to proceed with separate elections was unpopular among many Koreans, who rightly saw it as a prelude to a permanent division of the country. General strikes in protest against the decision began in February 1948. In April, Jeju Islanders rose up against the looming division of the country. South Korean troops were sent to repress the rebellion. Tens of thousands of Islanders were killed and by one estimate, 70% of the villages were burned by the South Korean troops. The uprising flared up again with the outbreak of the Korean War. In April 1948, a conference of organizations from the North and the South met in Pyongyang. The Southern politicians Kim Koo and Kim Kyu-sik attended the conference and boycotted the elections in the South, as did other politicians and parties. The conference called for a united government and the withdrawal of foreign troops. Syngman Rhee and General Hodge denounced the conference. Kim Koo was assassinated the following year. On May 10, 1948 the South held a general election. It took place amid widespread violence and intimidation, as well as a boycott by opponents of Syngman Rhee. On August 15, the ''Republic of Korea'' Daehan Mingguk formally took over power from the U.S. military, with Syngman Rhee as the first president. In the north, the ''Democratic People's Republic of Korea'' Chosen Minjujui Inman Kongwagak was declared on September 9, with Kim Il-sung as prime minister. On December 12, 1948, the United Nations General Assembly accepted the report of UNTCOK and declared the Republic of Korea to be the only lawful government in Korea". However, none of the members of UNTCOK considered that the election had established a legitimate national parliament. The Australian government, which had a representative on the commission declared that it was, "...far from satisfied." With the election, unrest continued in the South. In October 1948, the Yosu Sunshian Rebellion took place, in which some regiments rejected the suppression of the Jeju uprising and rebelled against the government. In 1949, the Syngman Rhee government established the Bodo League in order to keep an eye on its political opponents. The majority of the Bodo League's members were innocent farmers and civilians who were forced into membership. The registered members or their families were executed at the beginning of the Korean War. On December 24, 1949, South Korean Army massacred Mungyong citizens who were suspected communist sympathizers or their family and affixed blame to communists. Korean War 
This division of Korea, after more than a millennium of being unified, was seen as controversial and temporary by both regimes. From 1948 until the start of the Civil War on June 25, 1950, the armed forces of each side engaged in a series of bloody conflicts along the border. In 1950, these conflicts escalated dramatically when North Korean forces invaded South Korea, triggering the Korean War. The United Nations intervened to protect the South, sending a U.S. led force. As it occupied the South, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea attempted to unify Korea under its regime, initiating the nationalization of industry, land reform, and the restoration of the People's Committees. While UN intervention was conceived as restoring the border at the 38th parallel, Syngman Rhee argued that the attack of the North had obliterated the boundary. Similarly UN Commander-in-Chief, General Douglas MacArthur stated that he intended to unify Korea, not just drive the North Korean forces back behind the border. However, the North overran 90% of the South until a counterattack by U.S.-led forces. As the North Korean forces were driven from the South, South Korean forces crossed the 38th parallel on 1 October, and American and other UN forces followed a week later. This was despite warnings from the People's Republic of China that it would intervene if American troops crossed the parallel. As it occupied the North, the Republic of Korea, in turn, attempted to unify the country under its regime, with the Korean National Police enforcing political indoctrination. As U.S.-led forces pushed into the North, China unleashed a counterattack which drove them back into the South. In 1951, the front line stabilized near the 38th parallel, and both sides began to consider an armistice. Ri, however, demanded the war continue until Korea was unified under his leadership. The Communist side supported an armistice line being based on the 38th parallel, but the United Nations supported a line based on the territory held by each side, which was militarily defensible. The UN position, formulated by the Americans, went against the consensus leading up to the negotiations. Initially, the Americans proposed a line that passed through Pyongyang, far to the north of the front line. The Chinese and North Koreans eventually agreed to a border on the military line of contact rather than the 38th parallel, but this disagreement led to a tortuous and drawn-out negotiating process. <laughs> armistice The Korean Armistice Agreement was signed after three years of war. The two sides agreed to create a 4 km wide buffer zone between the states, known as the Korean Demilitarized Zone This new border, reflecting the territory held by each side at the end of the war, crossed the 38th parallel diagonally. Ri refused to accept the armistice and continued to urge the reunification of the country by force. Despite attempts by both sides to reunify the country, the war perpetuated the division of Korea and led to a permanent alliance between South Korea and the U.S., and a permanent U.S. garrison in the South. As dictated by the terms of the Korean armistice, a Geneva conference was held in 1954 on the Korean question. Despite efforts by many of the nations involved, the conference ended without a declaration for a unified Korea. The armistice established a Neutral Nations Supervisory Commission which was tasked to monitor the armistice. Since 1953, members of the Swiss and Swedish armed forces have been members of the NNSC stationed near the DMZ. Poland and Czechoslovakia were the neutral nations chosen by North Korea, but North Korea expelled their observers after those countries embraced capitalism. Post-armistice relations. Since the war, Korea has remained divided along the DMZ. North and South have remained in a state of conflict, with the opposing regimes both claiming to be the legitimate government of the whole country. Sporadic negotiations have failed to produce lasting progress towards reunification. On April 27, 2018, North Korean leader Kim Jong un and South Korean President Moon Jae in met in the Demilitarized Zone. DMZ. The Panmunjom Declaration signed by both leaders called for the end of long standing military activities near the border and the reunification of Korea. On November 1, 2018, buffer zones were established across the DMZ to help ensure the end of hostility on land, sea, and air. The buffer zones stretch from the north of Deokyok Island to the south of Cho Island in the West Sea and the north of Sokcho City and south of Tongchen County in the East. Yellow sea. In addition, no fly zones were established as well. See also 
List of border incidents involving North Korea Korean conflict Korean reunification North Korea–South Korea relations History of North Korea History of South Korea Partition of Vietnam Notes References External links South Korean Ministry of Unification Korean and English North Korean News Agency Korean and English Korea Web Weekly English NDFSK mostly Korean some English Koreascope Korean and English Rulers Org has list of post World War II US and Soviet administrators English Korean Unification Studies <laughs>